What's up, math fans? Um, there's a lot going on in circles. There's radius, there's a diameter, there's an arc, there's a tangent line, there's a chord, there's also a secant line, which I haven't even gotten to yet. So I want to talk about uh, what happens when two chords form an angle, all right? And understand there's two kinds of themes in circles. There's either angles or lengths, and those are two different things. If you're looking at a length of something, that's like a distance from here to here. You can measure distance in feet or inches or centimeters or miles or whatever. Distance is, is from here to here. Angle measure is completely different. Angle measure is measured in degrees and that's more of a turn. An angle is more of a turn and a length is more of a distance. So those are two different themes. So if you're getting a formula, your formulas can't have both distance and angle at the same time. It's either distance or angle measures, two different things. So I'm talking about angle measure today, so I'm gonna work in degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, keep that in mind. I'm working with degrees, my calculator should be in degrees. There's another mode on your calculator that says radians, worry about that later, we will get into radians a little bit later. Um, so, I have a circle and I have two tangent segments. Hopefully you've already seen my video, if you haven't, go back and check it now on properties of tangent segments, which says that this segment is congruent to this segment, it only touches the circle once at the point of tangency, and also it's perpendicular to the radius, which I will show you in a moment. But right now I wanna just figure out the measure of angle P. What is that angle? What is the measure? I don't know. There's a couple of ways to figure it out. One way is an instant formula. It is major. I'll write it in pink because I highlighted my major arc. Major AB is in pink, that's 300. And uh, the minor arc here, is this part which is 60 and together makes a full circle you should see already is 360 degrees that's a full circle so my formula is major arc minus minor arc divided by 2 and that's also a theme in uh, angle formulas when you're looking at a circle if you remember this video on inscribed angles you should remember that this angle is half of the intercepted arc, the pizza crust. This is half of this. If you remember my video on intersecting chords, this angle here is also half of something. It's half of this arc plus this arc. So that theme of half is always showing up in our formulas. This one is half of the major minus the minor. This was half of angle uh, arc plus arc. So the addition is different. Subtraction is different, but the half is, is staying the same. All right, so let's look up here. We got 300 is my major arc, and 60 is my minor arc, and then I'm gonna take half of that. I'm gonna divide that by two. So 300 minus 60 is 240. 240 divided by two is 120 degrees. And that is my measure, and that's it. It's a very simple process, just plug in numbers in the formula. Uh, obviously, it's not joined to scale because that looks acute, and my answer is obtuse, not joined to scale. You didn't see me use a scale, no scale. All right, simple as that, and we're gonna apply that to the next two. By the way, I pointed out something, and I said I was gonna show you about the radius. So if I drew this radius here, connected it to A, and I drew this radius and connected it to B, now I remember tangent lines are perpendicular to the radius, perpendicular to the radius. So I have 90, 90, some angle here, and some unknown angle here. But what's interesting is I was given that this is 60. If this intercepted arc is 60, this central angle is the same, also 60. So 90 plus 90 plus 60, what is that, 180, 180 plus 60 is uh, 18 plus six, what is that? 24, 240, so now you can find my missing angle, that's 360 minus 240 is 120. Look at that, you got the same answer. So there's a couple of ways to get that answer, whatever works for you. Um, here, it might be a little more confusing to do it this way, so I'm gonna use my formula. I'm gonna go with major minus minor divided by two equals the angle, which was given as 50 degrees. Oh, what do I do? This is crazy algebra. Not that crazy. 
put this over 1, cross multiply. If I go this way first, 23x minus 13x, I can combine immediately and say that's 10x. 10x times 1, still 10x. Equal sign drops down, 50 times, one is, uh, 50 times 2 is 100. Divide by 10, and x equals 10. So then you can plug it in here, making this 13 times 10, 130. 23 times 10 is 230. Together, I hope that makes 360. Let me check. 230 plus 130, definitely 360, so I'm good. Uh, technically, my trick about drawing the radius would actually work, and I would have no problem with you doing it either way. Take a look at the last one. Major arc AB is 220. This might actually show up on a test, so you have to use all your knowledge here. If major arc is 220, that means the 220 goes over on this side. And now you want me to find angle P, so my X goes there. Major minus minor divided by 2. Major minus minor divided by 2 equals my X. If only I knew what the minor was, I'd be good. Um, oh, wait a minute. Full circle, okay? You got to know some stuff. They're not always going to be clear with you. So that's 360 minus 220, that's going to give me my minor arc. 360 minus 220 is 140. So there's the 140. 220 minus 140, what's that? 220 minus 140. Uh, 80 divided by 2 equals x. Therefore, x equals what? 40. And therefore, your measure of angle P is also 40. All right. Thanks for watching. See ya.